Hi, this is Brad with Vintage Camper Rescue. This is our pre-delivery walkthrough of this 1970 Scotty that is being delivered here in a few days to its new owner somewhere here in Seattle. So we do these little videos just as a quick walkthrough, post them to our YouTube channel so the new owners can be familiar with its operations and we, that we did a safety feature check on it and everything so they can refer back if they need to. So let's just get right into it. All right, so the hitch is a two inch ball mount. Uh, with a retainer spring, always use this. And um, if you don't have one, if it falls off, make sure you get one because this keeps this from popping up. Uh, brand new safety chains, make sure you cross them over when you're attaching it to your tow vehicle. Brand new um, uh, uh, hitch receiver here. Always, always, always remove this wheel before you take off with your tow vehicle. Uh, depending on how high your bumper is or low, this is a low riding unit. So these, this wheel will bottom out and scrape, so make sure you do take it off and then retract the uh, pull all the way up. This is also a quick release as well, so it should come off very quickly. All right, moving our way around the camper. Standard uh, 110 plug-ins, um, just any old campground. If you do go to a campground with 30 amp service, usually they have an adapter you can buy or you can pick one up at your local box store, a 30 amp to 110 adapter, very simple to use. Uh, your sink, this utility shower is no longer used. We did some other utility work on the inside. This is your sink drain. It will have a cap on it that will have a, a garden hose attachment so you can uh, drain it into a proper uh, waste disposal unit or a bucket depending on the campground rules or where you're at. But it will have a cap that you can attach a garden hose to. Brand new wheels, Carlisle USA made, almost zero miles on them. 205 75R15s, trailer use only. So their brand new wheels should give you lots of service. Hubs were completely dismantled, new inner bearings done, everything was packed, put back together, and new caps put on. So good rule of thumb is to check it annually or every couple thousand miles, that's what we do. So it's, uh, it's uh, something you want to do maintenance on regularly. Uh, this came with the camper when we got it. Um, it's got a city fill and a gravity fill. The city fill is abandoned. Do not use the pressurized fill thing. Only use the gravity fill portal. The tank in there is a 15 gallon ABS non-pressurized tank. Um, if you try to fill with this, you'll just spray water all over the place because it is not intended to have a city water connection. Gravity fill only. This is your air vent and also your overflow detector. So if you overflow it, it'll start squirting out there. So it's a good indication to stop. All right, LED lights front and back. New uh, rear lights, also with a reflector on the back. This is a, an original uh, Washington State 1970 trailer tag. So this will be uh, licensed in Washington State. So all the new owner needs to do is take this plate off with the sales paperwork and take it to their local licensing agency and they will sign this plate to this trailer as a permanent plate. You no longer have to do registrations with this plate. It's a permanent plate and correct for this trailer. Storage utility compartment inside there will be some stabilizing ramps, some chalk blocks, power cord, and a hose. We always include that stuff as new as a courtesy kit for all of our campers. This is a really awesome Bargman lock. We have two keys made for it. So something of note for operation. Clockwise opens the door. Counterclockwise will lock the door. So when you turn this just a little counterclockwise, it'll lock the outside door, it won't open. So one more time, clockwise opens, counterclockwise locks it. So something I did once on a different camper, I went out and I grabbed the door handle and I locked it as I was going out. And I locked myself out of the camper. So what do you do? You gotta take a window off and crawl through. So you don't wanna do that, <laughs> okay? So we got idea to have a key around or just remember not to turn it counterclockwise on your way out. We also do have a secondary dead latch uh, as a safety feature as well. All right, moving inside. We took out all the propane out of this thing. It is a 12 volt and a shore power trailer only. So there are no propane appliances anymore on this camper. We converted everything to 12 volt. So moving in here, 12 volt light, under sink light, 12 volt light. The water pump is also 12 volt and it's run by switch. So to run the water pump, just hit the switch and turn the water on, good to go. Kind of a good thing to do is when you're done using the water for the day or before storage, always turn the switch off because sometimes the water pump will hunt for pressure and you don't want that to 
and we'll do, you don't want it to hunt for pressure at two o'clock in the morning. So just switch it off when you're done using it. Just a good habit to get into. All right, so as far as 120 power, we have plugs throughout the camper for charging or if you're you know connected up to a campsite. So let's do a quick polarity check. So that's good. That's good. Got one more set over here on the street side. Polarity's good. Polarity's good. All right, we also installed a plug for the heater. This is a little 350 watt space heater. Remember this camper is only 10 by six or so inside. This 350 watt heater will get this uh, camper to temperature at 40 degrees up to 75 within about 15 or 20 minutes. This thing's very efficient. The camper is insulated. So note the prongs are upside down. That is this plug was specifically put in for this heater because the, the way it's oriented, that way it's, it stays away from flammable materials. You don't want it near your bedding. So this is about the distance you have for it. So we'll do a quick polarity check for this plug as well. Good, good, all right. So all the power is polarized properly. So this little heater, it's on switch, power. It defaults at 90 degrees and the maximum time. So you can set the timer on it for however hours you want and then set your temperature for whatever you want. So it'll cycle to say 75 degrees and then shut off and then maintain throughout the night depending on however long you want to do it. So when you're done, you can just disconnect it. It's out of the way, so you won't bump it. But if you do decide you don't want to um, have it plugged in, just store it in one of the one of the uh, drawers if you don't have anything in there. So it just stores away nicely. So there you go. Uh, it is a regular refrigerator. We plug this in. It gets to temperature in about an hour. It does have an ice box in it, run by power. We covered all the open uh, plumbing and utilities there, so that is no longer exposed. We got three bins, two are folded up in there. So you have bins for storage under the seat here. Little storage in there, basket storage. And this is a fold down table. This has a little block on to keep from kicking back, but this will lift up and slide out and go across here. And then there's the front piece that goes in front of that. That's this, these cushions become the mattress. So ideally you have two beds in here 38 by 75 and also 38 by 75. So basically, basically two twin beds in here. This is a toaster oven, but also will bake and broil. We actually did a lasagna in one of these ones, not in this one, but the same model in a different camper. We have this little cord here attached. This, this unit will not fall out going down the road. But what does happen is this thing, you know, these trailers bounce on these little extra axles. This thing will, this door will flop open and these things will pop out. So just as kind of a, a hack, we just put this little, little guy up here and it keeps the door from flopping open. I have no idea how to do something otherwise, but that's it. And we also include a smoke detector in all our builds, even though there's nothing, um, you know, burning in here, but say someone has candles or they want to do something uh, with fire. You always want to have a smoke detector in any living space. So, oh, the other uh, maintenance item was the crank. So I did inspect this crank. It was rebuilt, but it has um, a locking. So one, two, three spins, it opens it up, closes it down, and about, whoops, and about three spins, you hear the window kind of lock in and click down. That, that makes it tight. So, so insert the key. One, two, three spins, and it opens up, and it goes right back down. So it is functioning. Lock. You hear that little click there. All right. So the keys for these guys, I just keep them in a drawer. I don't put them in the in the uh, sockets because if you're sitting here and your elbow hits this thing, or you got a little in here and their head will hit that thing, it could break the lock, break the key, and bend this. So I just take the keys out and just put them in a drawer when you want to open and close them. Cabinet storage up here cabinet storage up there and of course dish storage here so this is pretty much just your quick 10 minute walkthrough of the 1970 Scotty soon to be delivered thank you so much